today I am at the University of British Columbia farm. Are we calling it an urban farm? Are we calling it? Yeah. It, oh, it's so many things. It's the it's an urban farm. It's um, a university campus farm, right? Um, and it's an educational site, but it's also a full working production farm. So, well, I was in Vancouver for the Vancouver Web Fest, and I thought I had to check out this amazing farm that's doing so much outreach for the community, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, they have a group of small school children here playing and investigating, and mm -hmm. as we speak. Uh, tell me, how big is this farm? It is in total, technically, 24 hectares, um, which I'm not sure you guys use that measurement in the States. No, I looked it up <laughs> once before, but I forgot. How, much, how many acres is that? I, I don't know myself, yeah. Yeah, quite large. It's, it's larger than we, than we really expect, a, like when people say an urban farm to be. Um, my name is Chi Tam, and I am the admin and site coordinator for the UBC farm. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Site coordinator. What does that mm -hmm. do? What do you do? So I coordinate all the activity that happens at the UBC farm. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Including me today. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so uh, who is actually in charge of all the growing and, mm -hmm. and the, uh, I guess, the mission? The, ooh, that's a complicated question. Um, there's lots of people at the farm. It's a really, really big operation with a really small group managing it. Um, technically, who would be in charge of growing food would be our field manager, um, Tim. Um, and he manages all of our crew that actually puts things into the ground and, you know, uses the soil and grows our soil and makes it good and like provides food for us. Um, on the other hand, like children's camps and all those other things wouldn't be in the same category. Right. Um, and they don't directly grow food, but we grow good humans who learn a lot about food. Yeah. Oh, growing good humans, yeah. growing healthy humans. Mm -hmm. So we have all these different spaces at the farm and we don't actively manage all of them, but we're here to support all of them because we have designated areas um, to let other people take charge and try to manage their farm space and let other people get their hands in the soil so our production farm probably only takes up like one tenth of the whole space that we have and all the other spaces are various different learning spaces and other gardens um, that grow their own vegetables and food and kind of run their own activities cool. we're back the kids had to come in for their backpacks. Mm -hmm. Hey, so how long has the farm been here? The farm has been here, well, technically, the people who have been farming this land have been here for thousands of years. We're so lucky. Our farm has a relationship with the Musqueam people, who are the First Nations, um, and this is their unceded and ancestral territory, which is just like an opportunity that most of their like, learning spaces don't have. This particular space is the Musqueam First Nations Indigenous Health and Research Education Garden. It's so many things at one time. So we've tried to focus a lot of Indigenous programming here because we've dedicated this space and grown a lot of really interesting species of plants that are native to our bioregion and either have medicinal purposes or traditional plant purposes that we can demonstrate and use for elders to then teach the next generation and continue on that knowledge. So this yeah. place was never polluted or you didn't have this to is, reclaim it or... Oh, but it did have a very complicated history in that way as well. So, oh. you know, it was logged and then there was all sorts of different involvements I and see. then the First Nations groups lost touch with it because obviously it was colonized and then the university came about and suddenly there were all these sorts of things happening. Forestry students were doing interesting things with the trees and then some curious students Back in like the 60s and 70s, apparently there was a herd of cattle here, there were sheep here. The It was just Multi a whole use. operation. Yeah, and then at some point it settled down um, in like the 80s and the 90s, you know, curious students were like, you know, there's this cleared land here, we should we should reconnect, we should start growing something. So it was student-led. Yeah. It was first. a student-led effort, yeah, and so with curious professors mm -hmm. that were dragged along, very much so. <laughs> um, and yeah, the founding faculty of our university was the agriculture faculty. Did a mission at some point develop where you have now a mission statement for the farm? Yes, yes now we do. Now we are dedicated to being a space of learning primarily, um, both through research and through our teaching and our own learning, like from the soil and from the people and the connections that come with it. It's important that it's a working example. So part of our mission is to keep it as a living laboratory because if the university wants to learn how we can continue to do this better in this day and age, how can we grow food better in a right. way that thinks about all of us connected as a system. 
then we need to keep an actual functioning farm in order to even learn about it. So right. that's why it's important that we still are, we're not just a demonstration garden, we have to actually have full production scale and go through certifications that other normal farms have to so that we know what the process is like. So how much of your effort is outreach and how much of it is for your internal students and learning and mm -hmm. developing your systems? I'd say it feels like 50-50 every day at work. Um, there's a lot of people who are from the general public, from other regions, from internationally that are interested, that learn from the things that we publish, mm -hmm. um, learn from our example, but then a lot of the times it is UBC students, since it is their space, they get to come here for class and their professors bring them, or they hire out someone on staff to go and speak to them, that sort of thing. They've just had a very kind of harsh winter, right? Yeah, <laughs> crazy. We've never had something like this. So yeah. much snow. How mm -hmm. much snow did you have? I don't, we've had like more, more like than feet? two <laughs> snowfalls, period. Let's not even talk about how much it was. Just the fact that it fell two times was already overwhelming, but it oh. fell like five or six times over this winter. Oh, wow. Which Vancouver usually never gets, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to people who you want to inspire to grow food or to at least try to grow some food and they say well I live in Vancouver I can't really do that the weather is you know we have these bad mm -hmm. winters mm -hmm. so what, what do you say to people like that to inspire them to just try mm. one way is to think Vancouver is actually a rainforest so oh, when you think wow. about rainforest systems, they're so you just think about abundance and you think about biodiversity and right. you think about all these different things that are possible. So that's a very like positive note to start on because you, we have all these resources here, even though we're on the coast, the soil is sometimes sandy. Sometimes most of the city faces like is either shadowed or faces north. Mm -hmm. um, find the light where it is, and there's lots of it. Like there's so much happening in Vancouver. It's actually quite easy to grow food if you know what works for our climate. I mean, do you have anything that we can see now that's actually happening? Have you done your yes. seeding for the... Yes, yes. You've yeah. done all your seeding? So March seeding? has started, so the seeds are starting to come out. Yeah, for sure. So, all the seeding is done in here? Uh, yep, this is our seedling greenhouse. Welcome, welcome. So, oh, I wish I had one you. of these. <laughs> yeah, well, how do you germinate? Oh, I have a little setup at home. <laughs> yeah, wherever we can keep it, it's so... The, the temperature contrast with the outside is so big. At some point, will this whole thing be full of seed trays? That's the goal, I think. Yeah, but they will rotate out very quickly. As soon as they come out, out of their little trays, we want to get them into the ground. It's nice to have one thing in a whole tray. Yes. You know, because when you have a tiny home garden, you might have... Several rows of different things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they all come at the s different times. And then times. you forget where, like, which one. <laughs> exactly, and you start potting them up, and you go, wait, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> But it's yeah, so nice to see these little things popping up. It looks different from tray to tray. Yes, yes. Uh, so you're, there's more and less sand depending on, on the... Uh, what it you're, depends on which field they're ending up in, I think. At what point do you plant into the ground? Uh, it depends on what it is, um, but yeah. along from all the way through April to July until August, we'll keep on successively plant again and again. again. And then when do you kind of feel like it's done? When we feel like we're not putting anything more into the ground is probably September. Yeah, it's quite late in the season. We extend, we try to shoulder into the winter as much as we can. And do you have greenhouses where you can grow all winter or? No, we don't do hot houses. We do on the other side of campus, um, but those are more for experiments because Canada really is really cold. So we have a lot of researchers trying to find out how we can grow food in really extreme cold climates. And that's what those hot houses are for. Oh yeah, most of our staff are women. You said you're going to show us the mushroom. Yep, yeah, the mushroom experiment. Awesome. And it's right next to the Christmas tree farm. This is how you grow mushrooms. Well, on these is, logs? This is one way to do it. Yeah, it's difficult to do, to deliberately get them to grow. 
um, instead of just forage for them. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna see if we can set up a farming system. And if we succeed, then we can let other farmers know. So the Christmas tree farm is completely run by students and they had this idea that instead of cutting down a tree and then you know chipping it afterwards, you could pot the tree, rent it for the Christmas and then bring it back afterwards. Um, it's been really successful. It's a small operation, but it's so cute. Look at it. And they do all sorts of interesting like recordings on them. And how, how they grow and how well they do and which ones are the most popular in terms of sales. Are these returns? Yeah, or are so. these, these new? These are small ones coming up and some of them, the bigger ones in these potted ones were returned to us after Christmas. Oh. There's this giant field, I'm not sure if you can see it from here, but rows and rows where we grow and we grow in succession, we harvest and then we grow again and just using that space alone, like all the rest of the giant space around the farm is other programs, um, just using that space alone we produce tons and tons of food throughout the year. You said I think, like 75? Yeah, I, th I think the number is 75,000, yeah. Tons. Tons. Pounds. <laughs> oh, pounds, you're right. Pounds. Yeah, that I makes sense. Tens, tons wouldn't make sense. No, that wouldn't no. make any sense. No, no. Unless we're mining ore or something. Yeah. <laughs> Should I give them some food? <laughs> no. We already fed them. Well, thank you so much. Thank it was you. It so awesome to yes. uh, uh, meet you and, and get a little tour of the I'm so glad you found the us? big farm. Yes. <laughs> the big farm. Yeah. In the middle of a very small city, really. Yeah. True. true. <laughs> but you're making a big difference. Yeah, I hope That's so. That's the idea. <laughs> you, you are too. I hope lots of people learn about, you know, get their hands in the soil and really reconnect to the land. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Okay. Take, take care. You. Yeah. All right.